Today, Taylor series, made easy. Here's a typical exam question. This problem actually gives us some of the motivation for Taylor series. A small handheld calculator can't possibly store every possible value of sine. What is needed is a formula, and Taylor series gives us that formula. Since Taylor series is a formula, most of the work in giving a solution to the exam question is in remembering the formula and knowing how to use it. To understand Taylor series, imagine this game. I've graphed a function and pinned it onto corkboard and then covered up most of the function with green cardboard. In fact, there's only one point that we can see of the function. The, I'm, going to, I'm going to call the x, act, the x point uh, a, a equals pi on 2, that's where we go up from, and you can see here that the value of f of a is equal to 1. Now I'm prepared to reveal any sort of information that I have about the, um, about the, the function at that point to a group of primary and high school students, and the aim is that they are going to try and work out a formula for f of x. So x could be anywhere, it must work for basically all x, but I'm just going to put x here for the, uh, for the purposes today. So we start with the primary school student. And he reasons, he says, well, all I can see is that point there, 1, which is f a. So I'm going to say that f of x equals f of a. Now we come to the next older student, and he says, well... I've learned about slope. You said you'd reveal everything about the curve at that point, so you'll tell me the slope. So I suppose if I assume that the slope is constant then, if the slope is positive, then f of x will be up here somewhere, and if the slope is negative, then f of x will be down here somewhere. The next student says, well, we can actually work this out. We know that the slope is the derivative, f dash at the point a, uh, we know that the run here, this distance here, is x minus a. So we can work out the rise, this little bit here. And that will be x minus a times f dash a. And we can just add that on. So at this point we've got fx equals f of a plus x minus a times the derivative of f at the point a. So then the next student says, ah, but I've learned about the second derivative. And if the second derivative is positive, that means the slope will increase when we go from a to x. And so f of x will be even higher. It'll be up here somewhere. Similarly, if, f, if the second derivative is negative, then the slope will start to decrease and f of x will be down here somewhere. But I can't work out what I should multiply that second derivative by. I know that it should have the second derivative, but I don't know what to put there. So I'll just put plus question mark times the second derivative of f at the point a. So then the final student says, well, I can't help you with what the question mark should be, but I know that you can extend the argument. So we should actually have something to do with the third derivative, the fourth derivative, and it goes on and on forever. So we can start adding these plus the uh, a question mark times these higher derivatives at the point a. OK, we're pretty close to a definition for Taylor series and then being able to solve the exam question. Here's the equation that we have got so far. So now let's replace the question marks by the correct expressions that we should, be, that we should put before the high derivatives. So how do you remember this in an exam? Well, We've already seen the first part comes from very simple high school um, uh, mathematics. The f a plus x minus a times f dash a. We've also seen how we must have in the formula somewhere these higher derivatives, second, third, fourth derivatives. The expressions that are before the derivatives are linked by the process of integration. So we know the first one, x minus a, if we integrate that with respect to x, 
then we get x minus a squared divided by 2 factorial. And that's the expression that we should put in front of the second derivative. If we then integrate again, so we integrate x minus a squared divided by 2 factorial with respect to x, we get x minus a cubed on 3 factorial. And so that should go in front of the third derivative. And this process continues. So it shouldn't be too hard to remember this in an exam. I'll make a comment at the end about how another way that you can get these, these factors that are before the derivatives. I also should mention that whilst it may appear from my explanation with the graph before, that in fact this formula works for every value of x, unfortunately that's not the case. It does work for sine, cos and the exponential, but if you want to understand for a particular function which values of x it works for, this, this expression works for, well then uh, you need to really do some more mathematics. You need to understand the remainder term uh, and how that behaves and you'll come up with a term called the radius of convergence. But for today, for our exam question and for this YouTube video, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, we asked for a Taylor series and I suppose if we look at what we have here, it's an equation. But if we get rid of the fx equals, then we're left with a genuine series. And so this is the Taylor series. So let's put up a definition. Suppose that a function f has derivatives of all orders at a. This just means, all orders at a just means that all these higher derivatives exist. Then the Taylor series for f about a is given by the formula that we've got so far. So now we're in a position to solve our exam question. OK, we're now ready to solve the exam question, which is in the top left-hand corner of the screen. I would start by writing something like the Taylor series formula is, and then put the formula. That way, even if I get the rest of the question wrong, um, I'm still going to get some marks for having the right formula. So clearly we need to know what a is, and we're told it's about pi on 2. That tells us that a equals pi on 2. And we need to now know the value of f and its derivatives at the value a. And there are the calculations there. And we can see that there's a pattern, that the odd derivatives are always equal to 0, and the even derivatives oscillate between 1 and minus 1. So I would end by then saying the required series is, and you can see it on the screen. I could stop here, but I did say that I would make a comment on another way of getting to Taylor series. For the values of x that the um, Taylor series works, we would expect fx to be a series involving powers of x minus a. So our task is to find the values of a, b, c, etc. To do this, we repeatedly let x equal a and then take the derivative of both sides. You can see here that this gives you the values of a, b, c, etc. Which you can then substitute into the original formula. And this will give you the Taylor series formula. So that's it for Taylor series made easy. I hope you found it useful.